Hello and welcome to the video on how to test Flex applications by using the Flash Injector Helper Module. With Test Complete, you can perform functional testing of Adobe Flash and Flex web applications. You can easily simulate user actions on Flex and Flash movies and even access their internal objects, methods, and properties. There are several approaches to make these objects accessible to Test Complete. Each of them has advantages and disadvantages. For example, if you decide to use the Flex client library, you'll have to recompile your Flex application. Or, if you choose the runtime loader option, you'll need to copy some special files to the tested web server. In this video, I'm going to show you the specifics of using the Flash Injector module to make Flash applications testable. Flash Injector is a helper Swift movie that's shipped along with Test Complete and is intended for automating testing of Flex and Flash applications. Flash Injector automatically makes Flash applications testable at runtime without any need to prepare them in advance for testing. You just need to use the debug version of the Adobe Flash player and configure it in a special way for preloading the Flash Injector Swift file when running any Flash applications. Test Complete will then treat Flex and Flash applications running within that Flash player as an open application. Uh, that is, the test engine will be able to access native properties and methods of the Flash movie. Using the Flash Injector Swift module is especially useful when you're going to test a number of Flex and Flash applications and you only want to configure your testing environment once. So let me demonstrate how you can test Flex applications using the Flash Injector. And in my example, I'm going to use a Flex Orders application that's located on my local web server. So here's the Flex application that we're going to be testing with today. And now I'd like to walk you through the process of how to configure Test Complete so that we can record tests against this application. In order to test a Flex application via the Flash Injector, you first need to install a debug version of the Adobe Flash Player into your browser. So you go out here to this URL, and you're going to want to notice that there are several versions of the plugin that are intended for different browsers. You can see them all listed down here. So for example, if you're looking to test IE, then you want this version of the Debug Flash Player right here. Now, I've already installed the necessary debug Flash Player for my browser, so the next thing that I'm going to do is edit a special file that should get installed along with the debug version of the Flash Player. Now, this file may not have actually been created by the Flash Player, so you're going to need to check to see if it exists first, and if it doesn't, then it's really easy to create it. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to jump over to my user directory. In, on my Windows operating system, it's at C users and then my username, which is Nick Olivo. Um, on your system, it will be obviously your username. If you're running Windows XP, then this file is going to be in the Documents and Settings username directory. So the file you're looking for is this guy right here, mm.cfg. So you may just need to create this text file here. That's all it is, is a flat file under the hood. And then open that file up, and you're going to want to fill in this value here. What you're looking at here is the fully qualified path to the Flash Injector Swift file that's included with Test Complete. In my uh, system, it's stored here at C Program Files x86 and then in my Test Complete directory. Then you save that file. And then once you've done the MMCFG file, the last thing that you need to do is add the folder where the Flash Injector Swift file lives to the list of trusted locations in your Flash Player settings. So now what you want to do is open your browser and go over to the global security settings page of the Flash Player Settings Manager. And you can find that by going to this URL right here. It's uh, macromedia.com, WAC support, documentation, EN Flash Player Help Settings Manager 04. Okay, so just go there. And what you want to do is come down here in this little panel, and you want to say Edit Locations, Add Location. And then you just browse for a folder. And you're going to go on to go to your program files directory, wherever your test complete install lives. So in my case, it's program files 86, automated QA, test complete 8, open apps, flex, and say OK. And then that will add that location to your list of trusted locations, and then test complete will be able to test the Flash applications. When I open the tested flex application in my browser, the Adobe Flash Player will preload the Flash Injector Swift module and then load my web page. As a result, the tested application automatically becomes open to Test Complete. That is, Test Complete will be able to recognize all the internal objects and properties within my Flex application. Now, to ensure that you're actually seeing all those internal properties and methods, what we're going to do is bring up Test Complete. 
and I'm going to go over to the object browser page. And here's my Internet Explorer process. And if you expand the order Swift file, you can see right here, these are all the internals of my Flex application. So the, the page object here, that actually corresponds to the application's wrapper page. And then this object designates the tested application's main window. And then these objects in here, these are the actual windows and controls inside my Flex application. Now over here on the right hand side of the screen you can see the properties and methods of a selected object inside the object tree. And the exposed objects contain methods and properties common for all tested objects and methods. Additionally, Test Complete adds this Flex object property. And this property provides access to the underlying Flex object and its public properties, as you can see right here. So we've demonstrated how you can explore a Flex application in the object browser. And now I'm going to show you how to create a new test complete project, define a Flex application for testing, and then how to record tests against this application. So to create a new project, I'm going to click this Create New Project button. And that's going to bring up the Create New Project wizard. I'm just going to call this Flash Injector Test. And I'll click Next. And now we can define a tested application. And the first thing we need to do is specify the application type. As we're going to test a Flex application, I'm going to choose Web. And now we need to specify what type of web test we're going to perform. And in this case, it's going to be functional testing of web pages. Now this next page lets us configure a list of tested applications that we're going to use in our test project. And so I'm going to add the Flex app that we want to test here. And to do that, I'm going to click the Add button. You can see that adds a new line to this element here. And I'm going to specify a name that will be used to address my uh, website in my testing here. In this case, I'm going to call it My Flex App. I can specify which browser I want to use in my testing. In this case, I want to use the 32-bit version of IE. And then finally, I can fill in the URL that points to my Swift file. So I'm going to say HTTP localhost flash orders orders.swift. And the last thing I'm going to do here is make sure this auto run box is selected. What that means is when we begin recording our tests, Test Complete will automatically invoke the specified browser to that website. All right, so now I'm going to click Next. I'm going to keep the default settings for my visualizer and click Next. And I'm going to use JScript as my scripting language of choice here. Okay, so now you can see Test Complete has automatically created a new project for us, and it's added our web page to our list of tested applications. Okay, so now I'm going to record a test. So I'll just click the Record New Test button here on the toolbar. And once the recording begins, Test Complete automatically invokes my browser and takes me out to my target website. Now I'm going to perform some actions in my application. So let's edit the first order here in our grid. So I'm just going to select that row, and then I'll click the Edit Order button. And let's make some modifications here. Let's say that John Smith really wanted the uh, family album product and he's got a MasterCard instead of a Visa. And you know what? This is actually John Smith Sr., not John Smith Jr. Now we'll click OK. And to exit the application, I'm just going to close the app down. And then we'll stop recording. OK, now you can see Test Complete has generated some test commands here. And it's recognized all the internal objects inside our application here. So now what we're going to do is we'll replay the test and make sure that Test Complete replays that same sequence of actions that we've just recorded. So I'm just going to click the Run Test button. OK, I fast forwarded a bit. You can see Test Complete has finished the test. And we can see the results here in the log panel. And this panel gives us detailed information about the actions that the test simulated. Uh, for instance, this image right here tells us that we chose a family album from the combo box. And you can see here, we've got pictures of both what the application looked like both at record time and at run time. So you can easily see if the application's state and behavior differ from what we had uh, during the recording. And then the log items panel right here tells us that the test ran successfully. And we've got a little information section down here that tells us we encountered zero errors and zero warnings during the course of the run. OK, so now let's modify our test a little bit. As you've seen, to modify a certain order, we need to open the Edit Order dialog. Now, Test Complete automatically does that for us during our test run. 
but it's possible that test complete may not be able to open that dialog due to some reason. You know, maybe there's a problem on the site, we get a 404 or something like that. In that case, an error will occur and the test will fail out. So to control whether this dialog is open during the test, I'm going to create a property checkpoint. Now to do this, I need to run my application in order for test complete to be able to access the desired objects. So I'm just going to right click on my Flex app here and click run. Okay, once my page is back up, I'm going to bring back the edit order dialog. And now I can put the property checkpoint into the test. So I'm going to come back into test complete here. We're going to go into our test case. I'm going to come onto the checkpoint section here. I'm going to grab this property checkpoint action right here. And I'm going to drag that onto my test right where we click the edit order button. So we put the checkpoint right here. Now the, the property checkpoint wizard appears, and this wizard is going to help us create a property checkpoint. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the object whose properties I want to verify. So using this finder tool, I'm going to select the edit order dialog. So I'm just going to drag this right over the edit order box, and you'll see a red highlight is drawn around that box. Okay, so I'm going to release the mouse now, and Test Complete will capture a reference to that edit order dialog. Here it is. And now I'm going to click Next. Now I can select the property that I'm interested in. To verify whether the dialog is visible, I can use the visible property right here. Or I can use the public property of the underlying Flex control. Since we're using the Flash Injector module to text our Flex application, we have access to all the native properties and methods uh, via that special Flex object property. And to make that property visible, I'm going to click this Advanced View link right here. And I'm going to scroll down to the Flex object. I'm going to click this ellipses button right here. And I'm going to look for the visible property inside here. There it is. And then I'll click Next. And this final screen is just a summary of what the checkpoint's going to do. So I'm going to click Finish. All right, so now our checkpoint's been added to the test. And now we're going to add a few additional operations into our test case here. These operations will look to see if the checkpoint passed. And if it did, the test will continue. And if it didn't, the test will uh, fail out and we'll post an error message out to the log. So to do that, I'm just going to come onto the statements palette here. I'm going to put an if statement right after the property checkpoint. And what I'm going to say here is if the last operation in this case, if the checkpoint equals true, and true just means that it passed. So if that checkpoint passed, then we're going to perform these actions here inside our application. Otherwise, we'll use an else statement. We'll pull that on at the end here. If that checkpoint didn't pass, then we'll log an error message out to the log. And we'll just put that right here. And we'll log an error saying that uh, the edit order dialog did not appear. OK, so now we can run this test. OK, I fast forwarded a bit. Now you can see the test run is over. Test completes displaying the log file. You can see right here that we have our checkpoint telling us that the uh, dialog did appear, and so the test has passed. This concludes our video. You've seen how to make Flex applications testable by using the Flash Injector movie, how to record a test against such applications, and how to access the native properties of Flex application objects. To learn more about other approaches to make Flex applications accessible to test complete, please visit smartbear.com and check out our other video library. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.